Miss Foster, call the hotel. Have my bags packed. I'm leaving. And by the way, check my passage on the clipper. Same trouble with monkey people, maybe? No, no. But you can bet your best Sunday share on. The Jets will get plenty of trouble from us. You're right, Juan. We got plenty of bad trouble here, too. Don't I understand? That's why I'm back in Penang. And say, Ollie, we're going back to the jungle again. Now, I want you to get all my old boys together. And by the way, have you any idea where I can find Tuan Jeremy, Peter Jeremy? Not sure, Juan. But maybe find them at the Hurricane Cafe. Oh, thanks. Now, you get busy, and by the way, drop my luggage off at the Eno Hotel. Disturbing enough, tigers are suddenly beginning to run amok. Amok? That doesn't make sense. Tigers will sometimes go crazy and turn killer, but, uh... But it's a fact, Mr. Buck, a solid fact. Take my word for it. Tigers are carrying off women and children from campgrounds and killing men by the score. No one has ever seen anything like it. Mm, I see. Well, where are these killings happening, uh, Mr. Jeremy? It's concentrated in the territory of Damang North, around rubber plantations. That is what is so strange. Hmm. Uh, and the natives are taking it badly? Of course. And they're babbling wild stories of chindaks. Chindaks? That's bad. The labor situation is becoming desperate. Vital war materials which should be moving out for export are hopelessly piling up. It could hardly be some freak cycle of evolution. The tigers, I mean. It could be, but I don't believe it. There is a crazy pattern about it all. And weird as it sounds, there may be some human agency behind it. Impossible. Perhaps, perhaps not, but... But, uh, we must find out. And, Mr. Buck, if you don't object, I ask permission to go along with you. Sorry to me. As long as we're going to be partners on this expedition, let's cut formalities and get out of business, Pete. Try to, Frank. Then suppose we meet day after tomorrow up the river at the McArdle plantation. You know, Mac. Oh, Jeff McArdle. He's an old jungle standby of mine. I'll see you there. Until later, then. Well, thanks for all your help, Pete. So long. Good day to you, Frank.
hurt pretty bad. Take him home to village. No go. Chinda, chinda. Never mind that now. Come on, let's get going. Lukas, Lukas. Glad you're back, Tom. They've started. That infernal sinks on judo again. It's spraying the nerves. No wonder. Tiger jumped one of our boys right under my eye. Had a couple of shots at him, but missed. And the native? He's been all pretty badly, I think. Sorry days we are in, Tom. I don't know what to do about it. But Uncle Jess, something does have to be done, and quickly, right? Yes, yes, yes. Well, there's tons of rubber sap out there, ready to cure and ship. For my money, those Japs are getting too close to our rubber. And we're not even turning a lake because we're bogged down by a lot of superstition. Why, the natives are insane with fear, all this crazy chatter about chindocks. That's what's really beating us. Chindocks. Mr. <laughs> Ward with you. In spite of the fact that you're my own flesh and blood, you're the best overseer that ever worked for me. You've got the makings of a good rubber man. But somehow... You're still thinking you're in the United States of America. Well, I've been out here three years. Not long enough for an Asian man to get dry behind the ears, laddie. What do you mean? I mean simply this. When you've lived here as long as I have, you'll learn not to laugh at native superstitions, taboos, chin docks. Never forget it. Take my advice, laddie. Don't let your blood boil. All right, Uncle Bill. I guess we'll find a way out of this, all right? To me, pipes if we won't. Frank, look, just as if you stepped out of a fairy tale. And if you did, man, don't wake this old sinner up. I'm proud to see you. <laughs> Same old Jeff McArdle, a Scotsman dressed in blonde. Uh, I wouldn't say that. Frank, this is Tom, Tom Clayton, my nephew, of the renegade side of the family. It's too bad, but he's turning out to be the best overseer that ever picked cotton in old Alabama. Getting <laughs> a great kick out of kidding my Dixieland background, Mr. Buck. Don't you believe it? It's just bonny southern accent I fancy most. <laughs> Same old pot and kettle routine, eh? One doctor, house boy. Is there the slightest possibility that you're here for the reason that I hope you are? I think so. In fact, uh... Tiger, no kill. Chinda! 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 Look, see! Go on back! Go on back! Go on back! Go on back! Now, be a good fellow. Chakaporang, piggy rumor. Tell him how to go home. I'll catch the tiger. No tiger, Juan. Chinda! 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 Mr. Buck, Mr. Frank Buck. How do you do? How do you do? That's our resident physician, Dr. Lang. I'm very happy to meet such a famous man, Mr. Buck. See you, Doctor. I did everything I could, Mr. McConnell. I'm sure you did, Doctor. It's been like living a nightmare. Twenty-six, twenty-seven men brutally slain since I've been here. It's so horrible. And all this talk about chindex. Humans taking on tiger forms with a lust for blood like werewolves or vampire bats. Oh, Linda, that's a lot of silly nonsense. Not as much as you'd think. These natives have a deep-rooted belief in that sort of thing. Do you really feel that way, Mr. Buck? Come, come, Nutties. Let the blather go. It's about time for dinner. Come on. This makes 
one more. That's 15 this week already. How many more will we have, Mr. Glad? 8, 9, 10, 11 more to dispose of. That is good. Yeah. Come on. I've never had better food in my life. You're to be congratulated, I'll sing. Thank you, Tom Buck. We managed to have a fair snack now and then, in spite of the war. <laughs> Speaking of the war, Mr. Buck, I suppose you're back in this country to capture more wild animals. Well, I... Uh... Yes, he's here to hunt tigers, all right. Of course, I understand. <laughs> Company coming, Tom. To the spot of my grandfather is Peter Jeremy. Okay, then. Hi. <laughs> Welcome, my boy. Welcome. Hello, Mr. McArdle. Hello, Peter. Hello, Tom. Hello, Linda. Hello, Peter. Luckily, I met your guide in a village, and here I am, crashing in on your show. Splendid. You shoot me, please. Say, Ollie, I thought I told you to get 15 boys. Leave a boss, boy. No get boys to one. Him all I got because him my cousin. I speak truth to one. Plenty trouble to get safari boys. All are scared to go in the jungle. Ah, well, never mind. Come on with me. I'll get the boys. Delighted to have seen you again, Mr. Jeremy. I must get back to the infirmary. I have some cultures incubating. I must check them. Good day. Good day, Doctor. He acts strangely, doesn't he? Oh, I don't know. He's really very brilliant, absorbed in his work. He specializes in rare tropical diseases and toxicology. So I've heard. Juan Bach, what can do? I want boys for safari. You heard Juan Bach talk. He wants boys. Bach always good to safari boys. Yes, I know. He's very good, Juan. You listen. Ali never speaks lies. You get boys for Juan. Everything will be good. Good. Ollie speaks the truth. We'll get plenty of tigers. But one, not just tiger. We got to catch Chinda. Well, we'll get them. You just get me the boys. I try very hard. Not sure. But by tomorrow, maybe we see. Haros Jalan Dignan Tuan. Kita Punya Puran Puran. Peter. Of course I do. There are many things here that fascinate me. Linda, I... The drum. You know what they are saying? To 
Tomorrow at dawn, the boys will be ready to go with us in the jungle. And if it's all right with you, Uncle Jeff, I'd like to go with Mr. Buck in the morning. It's rubber, not tigers for you, my lad. If you can have the rubber, I'm quitting. You cannot resign. I have a contract. Besides, you're not the quitting kind. Remember, you're always half a McArdle, my lad. <laughs> you win. I'll do my stretch. I'm sorry you're not joining up, Tom. You could help me build my compound. I'm sorry, too. Frank, I'm thinking. There's an animal trading chap named Gratz. Built himself a compound up the river. The natives know the whereabouts. I it might save you time and money. Good idea, Jeff. I'll see if I can't make a deal. Keep my animals there. Uh-huh. And here's good luck to you, Frank. And bad luck to Tiger. And to Chin Dance. <laughs> trap as close to the plantation as this? Maybe not. After all, there have been killings closer to civilization than this. That's true. I suppose the things the way they are. One place is as good as another. Funny. The trap's not baited and it's sort of set backwards. Say, Olive, do you know who this trap belongs to? Boy says it belongs to Tuan Gretz. Oh, that's the chap McCardle was telling us about. You know, we ought to drop in on him. Good idea. Say, Ollie, we'll be back about sunset. Right one, I wait. I wonder what this means. Well, I guess somebody else in motors here, that's all. At least they're nice enough to warn us. I guess target practice is over for the time being. Yes. Let's get going. Hold that rifle, Pete. Come on, boys. Okay. by abusing animals like that. Get out of here. Go on, Peter, get out of here. It doesn't make sense. What reason could he have? I don't know, but he, he ought to be horsewhipped. Gent, gentlemen, I'm so sorry I didn't hear you come. I am Henry Gratz. You better tell your hired help that if I catch him abusing caged animals again, I'll tear his hide off. May I ask who you are, please? My name is Buck. Frank. Oh, Mr. Buck, all these years I've been in the jungles and I've never met you. Uh, this is an excellent pleasure. My partner, Mr. Gratz, Peter Jeremy. Uh, also an excellent pleasure. And, and now may I apologize for the behavior of my native. But tigers are killing so many of them, it's hard to blame them. Uh, you understand. No, I don't. 
Well, uh, Mr. Buck, I, I'd be delighted if there's anything I could do for you. Well, perhaps. I'm out here for a consignment of wild animals shipped back to the United States. Orders from zoos and circuses. Zoos and circuses? Uh, with America at war? How could that be? Well, maybe it's because our kiddies still like zoos, and our grown folks haven't lost their sense of humor. I see. I'm so sorry. I, I have no animals for sale, Mr. Buck. Well, perhaps I could... Uh, Arranged to uh, store some of my own cats here. Oh, that's different. Uh, consider everything at your disposal. Uh, everything. All right. Fine. Fine, Mr. Gratz. And believe me, it'll be an excellent pleasure to do business with the famous Mr. Buck. Sun's getting low, Frank. We'd better be moving. Yes, I guess we'd better. Well, good day. Auf Wiedersehen. Uh, but please, gentlemen, couldn't you stay for a nice cool drink? Yes? No, thanks. Uh, good day, gentlemen. Remember, Taco, our tigers are not for sale. You know, Pete, I was tempted to ask that Gratz if he knew anything about those shots that were taken with us this afternoon. Maybe it's better you didn't. Yes, but I didn't like the way he acted. I'm inclined to agree with you. Well, I guess we'd better turn that. I suppose so, but I just can't get that Gratz out of my mind. First, we're a couple of clay pigeons. Then we run across a shady character pestering a tiger. Then we meet this Grotz, who smells like a hon. Doesn't that all add up to something, Pete? Yeah, three accidents. Remember what you told me in Penang? Well, I'm convinced now that there is a human agency behind all this business. You mean to say? Exactly. In those three accidents, as you call them, all fit into the same puzzle. It's funny. What's well, funny? Well, just this. We have a fairly complete dossier on Gratz. But so far as we know, his slate is clean. But I still don't like him. And until I'm convinced otherwise, I want to keep an eye on him. Hi, my boy. Hi, my boy. Tiger's all right. Yes, but that's an unnatural kind of a growl. Well, he evidently came to the right place for tigers. Uh, Ollie, tomorrow you start building traps. Plenty of traps. It's a good place to catch tigers. You understand? Yes, the one. I understand. Plenty tigers come here. Well, you did a good job, Ollie. Now be a good tiger and get inside of the cage. Ollie, hurry him out, one. Be here, Ollie. Get inside of the cage. Okay. You're a pretty good tiger. I'll let you out. Thank you, Duan. Only how many traps have you got out? One, two, three. Many, Duan, many. One, two, three, many. In other words, you mean seven. Yes, Duan, yes, Duan. All right, Ollie. Hey, 
Tiger, who in trap? We got a never beat. Back out, Tiger, Swan. Beat, Tiger. Come on, let's go. I never saw a tiger act so low in my life. Oh, no wonder. Look there, sticking in his flank. Why, it's a... It's a blowgun, John. Well, we better get it out. More better kill him, Tuan. Oh, you're a dealer. You know very well, Tuan, Jeremy, and I don't kill him. Only we bring him back alive. Ollie, you distract his attention while I get that dart out. All right, Tuan. All right. The Sakai poison dart, all right. That's funny. The Sakai tribe long further up the river. That is strange. They never do come down this part. Well, there's something wrong about it. Definitely. No, I have a vague sort of theory about that. The poison on that dart is ipo, made in the sap of the ipo tree. Now, it'll kill a deer in five seconds. Perhaps that animal had enough strength to resist it. But at the same time, the poison in his bloodstream may account for his being so local. Well, here's another hunch. That may not be Epo at all. And it may be accident number four. Just what are you driving at, Frank? Well, I'm not sure. The only thing we know is we have another piece of a puzzle that doesn't fit in. As yet. Tell you what you do, Pete. Take this dart back to the plantation. And have that Dr. Uh, Lang analyze it. See what kind of poison it is. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's worth a chance. Right. But uh, Linda, Miss McCardle could make the analysis. Uh, but could she? Certainly. She majored in organic chemistry, took bacteriology and all that, including nursing. Okay. And while you're down there, get a case of cartridges from McCardle. And try me back my nightfall. And what about a tiger? Mr. Dynamite, back there in the trap. All I can do with him is send him down to uh, Gratz's compound. And here, this case will probably keep that pesky dart from sticking in your ribs. Thanks. I sure hope you're right about this. It may be the break we're looking for. Well, I'll go along with you down the trail a piece. Boy, bring my rifle. And I'm sure Mr. Grafts will fix you up. More quinine, I suppose. No, indeed. This is Atabrine, a new drug which has all the good properties of quinine. But I'm sure it will do the work. I'll try it. Linda. Hello, Peter. Excuse me. Come see the new winter coat I brought you. New winter coat? Yeah. There. And a fur coat of that. Oh, how cute. But never a fur coat. I'd much rather have him for a house pet. Ah, I am properly rebuked. Excuse me, please. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Gratz. Uh, yes. I guess I'll have to send the panther over to your place after all. <laughs> oh, by all means, it would be a pleasure. Uh, but put him in the warehouse and I'll send my truck over. Uh, save you the trouble. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, good day. Uh, and good day to you, lady. Good day. Good day, Mr. Gratz. Hello, doctor. Hello. What brings him to the plantation? Touch of malaria. We take care of all our neighbors, you know. Jungle clinic, eh? Oh, Linda. I almost forgot what I came here for. I have a little job for you to do, if you will. Certainly. We found this embedded in the flesh of a tiger. We seem to have gone crazy. We want it analyzed for poison. What is this? It's a sake blowgun dart. Hmm. So it is. I'm totally tipped with Epo. That's exactly what I came to find out. What exactly? Whether it is actually tipped with Epo or something else. It's a very deadly and dangerous drug. Please take my word for it. I'd like to, Doctor, but I want to be certain. Scientifically certain. Of course, I will be glad to run the necessary test on it after I complete the work I'm doing. If you don't mind, Doctor, Miss McCartle can do it. I don't like to take up your time. 
As you wish. How long would it take to find out about this thing, Linda? Three or four hours, perhaps. Then I can't wait. I promised Frank I'd get back to camp before sundown. Oh, that's too bad. But I'll arrange to send a runner for the report. In the meantime, walk over to the office with me. I want to see your granddad about some supplies. Of course, I'd like to. Goodbye, doctor. Goodbye. I'll be back in a few minutes, doctor. All right. In jungle anymore, Tuan. Chindak, everything Chindak. They very scared. Nonsense. No, Tuan. This boy say monkey people spoke the Chindaks here. Well, never mind Chindak. Go on back to work. No work, Tuan. This boys want to go home. Yeah, I'm glad you're back, Peter. What's up, Frank? What's the matter? Plenty. A tiger tore one of our boys to shreds before we get to him. And now they all want to leave. Won't they listen to Wally? No, I'm afraid not. They are positive that the Japs, or the monkey people as they call them, have possessed the souls of the tigers. What about the dart? I couldn't wait. It would have taken too long. I want to get back. I'm glad you did. Why doesn't he growl of a corner tiger? In one of our traps, I hope. Yes. I don't see any dark. Say, Pete, do you recognize him? Sure. This is the same animal Gratz's native was torturing. It certainly is. It's smart to tiger, all right. But so far from his own stamping grounds that it becomes another accident. Pete, let's stop using that word accident. Yeah, it doesn't fit anymore. Come here, lad. This is why. What is it? Where did you get this? Mr. Buck sent it to the infirmary. But why? You fool. Because he suspects the poison is not equal. He wanted the Clayton girl to run a test on it. And did she? No. She did not. Very clever and very fortunate of you, Doctor. Good luck it was this time. If you are smart, there will be no next time. Sit down. I also learned that Peter Jeremy is officially connected with the continent of Penang. Ah, now I'm beginning to see some things. To know things like this is an excellent pleasure. And we won't have any more trouble. He's coming. Remember what I said. I'll get right to the point. I caught a tiger in one of my traps. Ah, oh, that's fine. And it's the same animal I saw that boy of yours abusing a while back. Oh, oh yes, that one. Uh, he escaped when some of my stupid boys forgot to lock the cage. Oh, an accident, eh? Uh, what else could it be? Well, let it go at that. 
In any case, it belongs to Mr. Buck now. You know, finders, keepers. Uh, that's very unfortunate for me. Uh, that tiger especially I should ship to the zoological gardens in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, maybe I could buy him back, Mr. Buck. Yes? Well, I'll give that some very, very serious thought. I promise you. Thank you. Come on, eat. We're eating. Hey, Frank. Why in the world did you barge out on him like that? Do you remember that bamboo sheath I made for the dart? I well, just saw that on the floor in Grouch's place. What do you make of it? Well, no matter. We've got to see Linda right away. Her doctor is right. Taco. That girl at the plantation, you know her? Yes, I know her. Something tells me she could make plenty of trouble. Plenty. Sorry to barge in on you like this, but I just wanted to find out if Linda has had an opportunity to analyze that dart. How about it, Linda? Oh, I've been wanting to tell you. I, I must have slayed it or lost it before I got a chance. I'm terribly sorry. Well, no matter. I'm sure it wasn't your fault. Mr. Bucket may have been stolen by monkeys. They're outrageous thieves. They're driving me crazy, uh, stealing surgical instruments and whatnot. Well, that may be the answer. It's one of those things. An accident. The next time it will be different. I'll see that it is different, Doctor. Excuse me, please. I'm very tired. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night Doctor. Doctor. Well, boys, what about a nightcap? Delight, yes. I can go for one. If you don't mind, oh, I'll come on. on. Have a little speech. Oh, go ahead, Peter. I'm tired. I'm going to bed anyway. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, dear. Well, let's go, fellas. Come on. Come on, Jack. I'm afraid I have plenty of cause to be. But why? Just this. That dart wasn't uh, misplaced or simply lost. It was stolen. Stolen? Impossible. Impossible, eh? Well, listen to me, Jeff. The sheath that I made for that dart, I saw in Gratz's shack. Why, that's incredible. Not as incredible as it seems. I've always suspected that... Just a minute. A lot of things have got to be proven before we can act. If you ask me... That phony doctor and Gratz were as thick as thieves. And when I asked Linda to test the dart, Lang was quite upset about it. What does it all mean? Yeah, I don't get it. The doctor's no fool. He knows that I suspect that he stole the dart. Gentlemen, we're sitting on a keg of dynamite. But from now on, we've got to be very, very careful.
Pete, have a look in there and see if that isn't the same leopard we caught in a trap the other day. I'm afraid you're right, Frank. What's it doing here? I brought the leopard to show Linda. Rats was here and promised to take it to the compound for me. Well, never mind. Say, fellas, go and get some ropes and a couple of poles. We've got to get that black prowler back in the cage again. Right. All right, Frank. Come on, dear. Jacob, is there anything wrong? No, there's nothing wrong. Everything's under control. Everything. We'll have to play along with Gratz for a while yet. I'll drop the panther over to the compound. Hadn't I better go with you? Nothing doing. I'll deliver him myself. Oh, don't rub it in, Frank. <laughs> you beat it back toward the, the camp, Peter. I'll catch up with you somewhere along the line. All right. Happy landing. Good luck, Frank. the edge of the clearing with me. Of course. Each hour, one or two hours, and poof! <laughs> Come on, we will go. <laughs>
get up. Is he all right? Oh, he's more scared than hurt. No dodge in this one. It would be very interesting to know where he came from. Well, you got something there, Pete. There's about one chance in a thousand we could backtrack him. We'll have a go at it anyhow.
find. Number one for our side. And two and two are beginning to make four. Mr. Buck, please take my word for it. The poison of the dark is equal. Do you agree, Linda? No, it's not equal. Whatever the substance is, it reacts to none of the vegetable reagents. The molecular structure suggests the coal tar origin. In other words, the drug is synthetic. Nonsense. Ridiculous. You're crazy, Miss Linda. I don't mean to question your professional opinion, Dr. Lang, but what I say is the truth. You're a liar, yes? Please, look for yourself. Stay right where you are. All of you. Get over there. You can't get away with this, Lang. Shut up, you interfering fool. You were just a little bit too smart, Mr. Buck. The girl is right. It is a synthetic drug. And you know what excellent work it is doing for the right. You know, Doctor, sometimes you can almost be mistaken for a human being. You stupid Americans joke at the wrong time. I am the one to laugh. If it interests you to know, it is I. And I alone was responsible for all this. Aren't you being a little bit selfish? What about Gratz? Don't let that bother you, Mr. Buck. He will be well rewarded, too. I'm afraid he'll never appreciate it. Why not? Because he's dead. Why, you swine, you... Get back. Get back. Get back. We stupid Americans are rather a nuisance at times. Aren't we, Dr. Lang? I see him with a blue gun. He turned around quick to run. And he ran right into this thing. Ollie, you're always on hand when I need you most. Tell the boys, no more chin ducks. No more chin ducks, Tuan? No more. Good news. No more chin ducks. And no more monkey people. No more chin ducks. No more chin ducks. Well, Frank, you certainly had the right hunch about those darts. Yes, Pete. This is, this is about the last chapter of the book. Last chapter? This closes the book. Well, not quite. We've still got to round up every one of those crazed tigers Gretz turned loose. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Come back, Frank. Come on, Frank. Bye. See you soon. I got the same lump in my throat I always get with the circus leaves, Tom.